rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Amma ba'd A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim <coughs> إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he jalla jalaluhu allowed me to travel and visit you brothers here in Cambridge <clears throat> I'm pleased to be here. Uh, Cambridge is a very historical town and to talk <coughs> uh, about an Islamic scholar in the city of knowledge is very important. And I pray that May Allah's peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> Allah Ta'ala has praised the people of knowledge several times in the holy book with his own spoken words. Because we believe that Quran is the Kalamullah, speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Allah says, يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات. الله تعالى الله المعتي raises in degree those who believe among you and have been given knowledge. It's a great blessing from Allah سبحانه وتعالى for the believers and plus having knowledge. And Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَخْسَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ No doubt that Allah Ta'ala admired the status of the ulama because the knowledge brings the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Having more knowledge, putting more efforts to knowledge, it brings spiritual prosperity and many other worldly benefits also <coughs> having a scholar in a community in a society is also a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said fadlu al-alimi ala al-abidika fadli ala adinakum no fi riwayat al-ukhra he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said فَضُلِ الْقَمَرِ عَلَىٰ سَائِرِ الْقَوَاكِبِ The superiority of a scholar of an alim of deen over just a worshipper or devout worshipper the superiority of scholar over a devout worshipper like my superiority over any of you the lowest one and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna allaha wa malaikatahu wa ahla al-samawati wal ardi hatta al-namla fi jihriha wa hatta al-hud la yusallun ala muallimi al-nas al-khair knowledge the seekers of knowledge the teachers of knowledge the ulama Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Indeed Allah His angels And Ahlul Samawati wal Ard The creatures of the heavens and the earth Even the ants And even the fish in the water They pray For the ulama For the students of knowledge My brothers in Islam One of 
these great scholar whom about whom i am going to speak is hadratul imam al hafiz al muhaddith muhammad bin fadaldin gondalvi may allah have mercy on both of them <clears throat> hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahmatullah alay has his students still alive like in britain we have maulana sanaullah sialkoti who lives in london and one of his students is hafiz akhlaq hafizahullah who lives in bradford these ulama were the most appropriate people to speak about al imam hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah because they studied with him uh, under his supervision and they know better about the sheikh <coughs> and however <coughs> somehow my brother ali hasan khan he asked me in fact ordered me that i must come here and i am grateful to participate in it as <coughs> it is said i am sure you know there is a, there is an arabic poet poetry it is said uhibbu as-salihin wa lastu minhum la'alla allah yarzuquni salaha i love the righteous people but i am not one of them perhaps because of them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide me to the reform to the guidance the fact is as i heard about 20 years 22 years ago from a known long serving sheikh ul hadith in pakistan hazrat ul sheikh sheikh ul hadith maulana abdur rashid rashid hazarwi hafizahullah still alive in one of his talks he said kabbarana mautul kubara the death of our seniors put us in a position to be senior but we are not <clears throat> my brothers i very humbly like to begin my short talk about our scholar of all knowledges not only a scholar of hadith he was hujjatullah hujjatul islam he was the sheikh ul hadith the master of hadith of the 20th century hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah may allah have mercy on him his background that his ancestors were from kashmir and about 300 years ago they turned to islam they were not muslims subhanallah the selection of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah ta'ala said in surah al jumu'ah that there are more who will join this chain of faith and knowledge hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah he was born in a town called gondlawala couple of miles away from gujrawala his father maulana fadaldin was 
alim and in his house hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah passed away uh, uh, was born in 1898 and he memorized some of the parts of the quran under the supervision of his father when he was 8 years old his father died and he was 8 years old very young child became an orphan now here <clears throat> there is very interesting point related to the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam normally in our society we regard orphans as very minor members of the community of the society and many times they are ignored no attention is paid to them that is why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i strictly i very strictly command you about the rights of the orphan and the women hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah became yatim and orphan at the age of 8 <clears throat> those people whom allah choose for a good work it is very interesting point that our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born as yatim he was born as his father passed away before his birth and <coughs> the person who collected the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and collected in a way that his work became known to all muslims and his book his collection of a hadith is the best book after the kitabullah sahih al bukhari can you imagine that imam bukhari rahimahullah his father died couple of years later of his birth and allah chose imam bukhari rahimahullah for a great work and his book is known his work is known he is known imam bukhari rahimahullah <coughs> wrote sahih al bukhari and bukhari sahih al bukhari is not only a collection of hadith this is the book full of knowledge academically and if you want to benefit from the whole sahih al bukhari you need to have very good knowledge and the best person who explained sahih al bukhari made his explanation sharh is the best shaf fathul bari written by imam ibn hajar al asqalani and he was yatim he was 4 years old when his father died and today we are talking about al hafiz al muhaddis muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah he was yatim and he was 8 years old when his father died and when we read the people who know about him or people <coughs> who study about him they are amazed of his life of his knowledge of his work of his writing his memory and his fields of knowledge
<coughs> he became Hafiz of the Quran at the age of 10. Then he made his journey to further knowledge of understanding Islam and he studied in Gujrawala. Thereafter, <coughs> he was admitted to a madrasa, which normally we call madrasa. Madrasa Ghazanaviya. In a city which exists now in India, Amritsar. Madrasa Ghazanaviya. How was it established? Madrasa Ghazanaviya. How was it established? Sayyid Imam Abdullah was a scholar, an alim, and the follower of Sunnah, lived in a city called Ghazni in Afghanistan. And he followed the Sunnah very strictly. He was known in the area that Sayyid Imam Abdullah, he does raful yadayn. And people made complaint to the ruler. And the ruler said, you have to leave Ghazni, you have to leave Afghanistan. Because of you, I am in trouble. So he traveled from Afghanistan to India. And they started a madrasa in Amritsar. That, that madrasa was not only a madrasa, that is a university. In that time, there was like a modern university of our time. Our Imam Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi Rahimahullah, he studied there for five years. Books of Hadith, books of Fiqh, books of Science of Hadith, Science of Fiqh, many other books. Can you imagine, you know, we have, if we have an Imam or Mufti in our Masjid, <coughs> how much we value him? How much we value him? If we look the background of the ulama, how hard work they did in their life to attain knowledge and then to teach knowledge. When Hafiz Gundalvi Rahimahullah, he was studying in Madrasa Ghazanaviya in Amatsar. He studied, there was an interesting thing happened there. He began to study with Sayyid Abdul Awwal Ghazanavi Rahimahullah. He studied some Bulughul Maram and some, some part of Jami' at tirmizi <coughs> and his teacher passed away. Thereafter, he began to study with Sayyid Imam Al-Imam Abdul Jabbar Ghazanavi. And this Shaykh was an Imam. He really was the Imam of a Ruhaniyya, of spirituality, of knowledge, of everything. And Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi Rahimahullah began to study with him. And six months later, Sayyiduna Imam Abdul Jabbar Ghazanavi passed away. Then what happened? People began to talk that whoever teaches Hafiz Muhammad Rahimahullah, he will pass away. That become like very interesting for people to talk. And thereafter, Hafiz Gondalvi Rahimahullah he says, when his second Sheikh passed away and he began to study with the third Sheikh, he, he worked hard, studied hard. How, can you imagine our students, how many, how many lessons they have in a day? Four, five, six, seven, in college, two or three. And how many lessons he used to have in a day? 
एटीन ट्वेंटी लेसन अ डे दिस इज हाउ द पीपल हु टच इज दी स्काई दे नेवर रेस्ट दे नेवर रेस्ट बिकॉज दे सेट दियर डेस्टिनेशन दे सेट दियर गोल एंड पर्टिकुलरली टू हैव ए गोल फॉर द शेख ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहान सुबहान अल्लाह and 18 periods in 24 hours 20 lessons in a day we think we normally think of our i'm not saying that our imams or mashayikh or mufti or huffaz they are of the same level of those gone but when we look into it and hafiz gondulbi rahimahullah he studied sunan abi dawood just in one month just in one month as a book of huge volumes thousands of ahadith for what for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was no wazifa there was no competition there was no wages there was no price and there was no fame and he studied sahih al bukhari just in two months just in two months and he studied in madrasa ghazanawiya for five years when he completed the course there what is the next level will be we'll think that he must have gone to a madrasa or to a masjid to be an imam yes journey ends no he went to Del delhi delhi and he studied herbal medicine for four years and he had gold medal not just a normal student not to just have a certificate that i will open a shop for herbal medicine he mastered it who was his who was his teacher in in that college of herbal medicine hakim ajmal khan you must have heard of him hakim ajmal khan is a big name in herbal medicine in subcontinent the master the genius of herbal medicine and he says when i had to teach this gentleman i had to study specially and so intelligent he was and during that time this is the journey to knowledge for us all and for our children these are the heroes of knowledge in the journey to knowledge these are the heroes that is why we study them we learn about them we get courage from them they were human beings not angels and and he passed the exam in tip in herbal medicine with the result of a gold medalist and at the same time he studies other books of knowledge like falsafa physics chemistry mathematics algebra he was master of them and then he returns to gujranwala again after completing his knowledge uh, achieving whatever of the tar and he begins his journey for teaching at the time and he taught he he started teaching 1921 and carried on 10 years he taught in his village town where he was born thereafter he went to darul hadith rahmaniya in delhi and he taught there and thereafter he went to omarabad omarabad was you can how i mean when we look into the history of 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 these people 
of knowledge of Islamic scholars particularly. Their journey is very hard and difficult. And with them, there had been some good people who were rich in worldly wealth. Jamia Darus Salam Omar Abad in Madras in that area <clears throat> was established by a man who just had the wealth and where he started Islamic Madrasa can you imagine a millionaire of the time would begin Islamic Madrasa start in his own in his own house Umar house he started there that Darus Salam I'm sure you have heard Maulana Abdul Hadi Hafizahullah who was Amir lately of Jimmy Uta Ahl Hadith he came many times he, he came, came many times here yeah, four five times Sheikh Abdul Hadi he studied in Darus Salam Umar Abad how this madrasa began now is now it is more than a university but where it began in a house in a house of a wealthy person and Hafiz Muhammad Gondali Rahimahullah he went there and how, how far it was how far is it from from Lahore Gujranwala 2000 miles 2000 miles he taught there and from there he came back and he began to teach in Gujranwala again and very interestingly during this time when he turned to his village Gondalawala very interesting thing happened amazing unbelievable and the ulama of Ahlu Sunnah are like this one young man died and his uncle was very rich very known in the town when this young man died they called Hazrat Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi Rahmanullah for Janaza he said no I am not going to do the Janaza why because he died he used not to do the prayers he was Be Nawaz he was not the person who would do the Salah can you imagine now now in our society this is the why we are listening today to this to the seerah to the life of Imam Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi Rahimahullah we need to learn we need to learn from these things we take these things very lightly when these things happen in our town or masajid we take them very lightly my brothers it is very important any time any talk happens in masjid make effort I pass message to those who are unable to attend today for their various excuses or reasons that when these things happen bring your young children who are teens or over or whatever make effort to give time and we learn from the life of such people what would you what what would you do today if your imam says i'm not going to do his janaza because he was not doing the salah imam will be set finished get another one then you hired another one what what, what is this who with who we are sincere we sincere with allah we sincere with the imam we sincere with ourselves for nothing sack the imam hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah he said he would not do the janaza and he didn't do it <coughs> he carried on his journey teaching these madaris whom we sometimes criticize just being just saying madrasa these madaris are a big contribution a huge contribution of the people who contribute in them if 
a child goes into a madrasa not reading anything at all just entered into madrasa 8 years and once he finishes the course he will be an alim of the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala studying on the ground sitting on the grass sitting no chairs no tables and this is what was the time of hafiz muhammad gundli bi rahimahullah teaching there and he also taught in a madrasa called ta'lim al islam where alhamdulillah i studied for 8 years and then he taught jamia islamia gujrawala he taught jamia salafia faisalabad and during these journeys you know one another thing to important to notice whoever invited hafiz muhammad gondulvi rahimahullah to travel to the madrasa wherever they send the delegations they send the delegations that imam sheikh we request you with the delegation we have come to you that we need you that you come to our institute and teach the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he taught in jamia salafia in faisalabad how was this jamia where sheikh went where sheikh went to teach how was this jamia it was 3 miles away in the desert of faisalabad there was no fresh water there was no building only few walls few rooms they just had some of the rooms they had roof no windows no doors there was no masjid even when they started and once chef of muhammad gondul bi rahimahullah when they used to lead salah in open land and never complained but now alhamdulillah if you if you visit sometime faisalabad and visit jamia salafia is the biggest hostel not even modern universities have such hostels hundreds of rooms for the students for living living hostel free education no fee at all clothes food books teachers everything provided this is the contribution of madaris this the this is the contribution of the people like hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah and during his time of teaching when jamia islamia madina university in madina al munawwara was set in 1960s the great imam of the time imam muhammad nasiruddin al albani rahimahullah may allah have mercy on him he was the most expert teacher of hadith in madina al munawwara when he left madina al munawwara now they needed a sheikh al hadith for the university of al madina and they looked everywhere who is the most suitable person for to be a sheikh al hadith in madina al munawwara in the university of madina subhanallah can you imagine this and that time they selected hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah and sheikh abdul qadir he took a special message of ibn baz rahimahullah a delegation went to pakistan to request hafiz muhammad gondalvi rahimahullah to come to madina al munawwara and to take the position of sheikh al hadith in madina al munawwara that was the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this imam this muhaddis this hafiz who was selected by ibn baz rahimahullah for the position where imam al bani rahimahullah taught and when he began his lessons in darul hadith in madina al munawwara the lessons for the tulaba 
even the mashayikh of Medina used to come to his lessons when he was teaching in Darul Hadith. And professor of Medina University, Sheikh Muhammad Majzoub, Sheikh Atiyah Salim, they are big names. They are big names of knowledge in our time. They used to attend the lessons. And Shaykh, he taught in Medina al Munawwara. And even before he went to Medina al Munawwara, some of his books were presented to the professors of Medina. And they used to say, whoever wrote these books, they never met. They never met Hafiz Muhammad Gondali. They, they used to say, whoever wrote these books, small, not, not volumes. Tuhfatul Ikhwan. Tuhfatul Ikhwan. If you find in your life sometime, it is in Arabic. It's just, just this bit. Maybe if it is a computerized version, it could be about 50 to 70 pages. And once they studied that, they said, whoever wrote this book, he is the Imam of Hadith. And some other books. And <clears throat> once when, when he was in Medina, some of the ulama, they were talking about a hadith, particular hadith, where great ulama, Imam Shanqiti rahimahullah, existed, was among them. They, they said, we, can't, we cannot find this hadith. Hafiz Muhammad Gondali rahimahullah, he said, it is in Jamia Tirmazi. They said, Many of them, they said, no, no, it doesn't exist there. We couldn't find it. He said, you bring the book. I show you. And he opened Jamia Tirmazi and told them, look, this hadith exists in this page, in this chapter. That is why at that time, Imam Shanqiti, rahimahullah, he said, Ma ra'aytu alam ala wajhil ard min hadha shaykh. I did not see more knowledgeable on the earth than this man, this Sheikh, Minhaz Sheikh. When one of the students of Hafiz Muhammad Gondulvi Rahimahullah he went to see Sheikh Albani Rahimahullah. Sheikh Albani Rahimahullah he very clearly said, you know, in 19th and 20th century, early 20th century, you can say the ulama of subcontinent of Barri Sagir. They were the ulama who preserved the knowledge of hadith. And Shaykh Albani used to say that I am one of the hasanat. <coughs> I am one of the good deeds of the scholars of hadith of subcontinent. And he used to name them. And he said about <coughs> Hafiz Muhammad Gondulvi rahimahullah. He used to say Ma ra'aytu tahta adim is sama. A'lam min al-Hafiz al-Muhaddis Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi wa kana imaman li kulli fan He says I never saw under the sky more knowledgeable person than Hafiz Muhaddis Muhammad Gondalvi rahimahullah what he said wa kana imaman li kulli fan he was the man for all knowledges. You know, some of the people, they are expert in hadith, some are expert in fiqh, some are expert in uh, uh, tafsir, some are expert in falsafa, some are expert in mantuk, but wakana imaman li kulli fan. And he was the imam, and he was the sheikh, and he was the person for all knowledges. His son says, his son says when he was doing FSC in, in science subjects, uh, whenever he had a trouble, he would come to his father, Hafiz Muhammad Gundli, Rahimallah, and speak to him because he knew about physics, he knew about chemistry, and he knew, he knew about algebra, he knew about trigonometry. All of the knowledges, he was expert on them. <coughs> and Alhamdulillah, Shaykh Rahimahullah, he taught Sahih al-Bukhari more than 50 years. And he taught the Islamic knowledge over 65 years. Alhamdulillah. These are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them. And <coughs> many of the books he wrote, 
hundreds of thousands of students they benefited from him alhamdulillah even today in our time his students exist as i mentioned about sheikh sanaullah salkoti hafizahullah hafiz akhlaq hafizahullah he is in bradford allama ihsan ilahi zahir and irshadul haq athri who is a muhaddis of our time in pakistan and there are big big names those people who 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 are the students of sheikh hafiz muhammad gondal bi rahimahullah another interesting thing about <coughs> his memory his memory was very sharp he was he was hafiz not only hafiz of book ahadith he was hafiz of fathul bari fathul bari is a shara of sahih al bukhari is huge and he would just just read without looking at the book and the <coughs> he as i mentioned he was very expert in herbal medicine one person he wrote a book about tib about herbal medicine he contacted hafiz muhammad gundli rahimatullah rahimahullah to review to look at the book if he if he wrote right or wrong and he came he read the whole book to hafiz muhammad gundli rahimahullah and he went back During his journey, when he was going home, he lost the book, and he was very upset. He wrote to Hafiz Rahimahullah. <coughs> he said, "Look, during this journey, I lost my book. I'm very much worried." Hafiz Muhammad Gondulbi Rahimahullah. He said, <coughs> "What did you do? You come back to me so and so time." And he returned. <coughs> you know what? Hafiz Gondulbi Rahimahullah. He told him, "Right." and he began to write and the same book other person who wrote hafiz rahimahullah he dictated him the same book same words exactly subhanallah molana salkoti molana sanaullah salkoti rahimah uh, hafizahullah he says that shaykh when he would finish his lesson we would go to him and give him his massage and talk to him and he would ask us what are the news now is days what are the news now is days and sheikh uh, sanaula says uh, ustaz don't you read newspaper he said no i don't read newspaper because when i read newspaper i memorize it <laughs> so there is no need for me to memorize things which i don't need subhanallah one of his students uh molana muhammad abdullah who be, who had been sheikh of this for a long time and he said You know now <clears throat> he said if there had been a Sheikh Al Hadis in the 20th century if there had been a Sheikh Al Hadis in the 20th century he was Imam Muhammad Gondalbi rahimahullah in his time was Muhaddis Ropri rahimahullah Hafiz Muhammad Abdullah Ropri rahimahullah he was a muhaddis he was known as a muhaddis he said that this man Hafiz Muhammad Gondalbi that he he has no limit of knowledge so my brothers these people are very important for us they are our heroes they are our predecessors who lived in our world learned knowledge and taught it lived like a normal human being were very specially what is important for them what is important for us in their life is to learn is to learn to reflect what they did what we are doing and to tell these stories to our people to our children to encourage them that these sort sort of people existed in our history and who spread knowledge from east to west sheikh al arabi wal ajab who taught the arabs and the non arabs and their knowledge went everywhere even today in our time if we look into the life of hafiz muhammad gondalbi rahimahullah his students and students of his students they are everywhere four or five students of hafiz muhammad gondalbi rahimahullah i personally benefited from them some of his students whom i know personally they are they had been and they are the shuyukh al hadith so may allah subhanahu wa taala 
guide us to the path that we we learn about these people and we follow their footsteps and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter us and them together into the paraba, paradise. Jazakumullah khairan. Sheikh, you forgot to mention Dr. Suhaib Hassan and Maulana Mahmoud Meerpuri as well. They were. Yes, yes. Dr. Suhaib Hassan, alhamdulillah, who is a big name for knowledge. He is a student of uh, Maulana uh, Hafiz Mahmoud Gondalvi. Maulana Mahmoud Ahmad Meerpuri, who was, who was a great leader in Britain for us. He was he was a student of our Mahmoud Gondalvi, rahimahullah. Maulana Ismail Salafi, rahimahullah. Maulana Ismail. Uh, there is an inter other interesting thing I tell you. Amazing. Hafiz Muhammad Gondavi Rahimahullah, he was sitting in the masjid. There was only two people in the masjid, Hafiz Muhammad Gondavi Rahimahullah and one of his students, Maulana Shahbaz Salafi. And Maulana Shahbaz Salafi he says, when Hafiz Sahib was sitting in the masjid, one man came, entered the masjid and he said, <coughs> somebody told me that you are the greatest alim of the city, of the time. I have come to you to ask some questions. Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi Rahimahullah what he says? No, 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 somebody told you wrong. I am not the greatest alim. Greatest alim is Maulana Muhammad Ismail Salfi. You go to him. Who was Maulana Muhammad Ismail Salafi? Who studied from Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi Rahimahullah? How humble he was. Then there was a Salah. After the Salah, Hafiz Gondalvi Rahimahullah led the Salah and he was crying all the way in the Salah. Being humble. Being humble that he tells him that Salaf Ismail Salafi is the greatest alim while Maulana Ismail Salafi was student of Hafiz Muhammad Gondalvi Rahimahullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us humble too. Just a second. Anything else?